Greetings everyone and welcome back to another installment in the series called Tacky Tablets. Now, usually I go along with a script that I've written, however the tablet that I'm going to be taking a look at today I've only picked up recently and I haven't had it for too long. In the previous Tacky Tablets episodes, all the tablets I've looked at have ran Android. This one runs the most generic bare bones operating system that there is, but is that going to be a good thing or a bad thing? We're going to take a look at it and see. And also, I got this from my flea market for one whole dollar. It was just sitting on a table of miscellaneous goods. I picked it up, I asked how much it is. They said I'd just take it for a dollar and I got it. However, when I bought it home, it didn't actually work. I've had to swap the batteries out of it. But this video shouldn't go too long, but I'll leave some rough timestamps in the description so you can skip along if you need to, because there's not a lot of functions to really cover on this. Without further ado, let's have a look at this thing. And here it is, the iCoustic seven inch media player tablet thing. So accordingly, iCoustic is from Target Australia, and this was available in about the year 2012 to 2013. Not entirely sure of how much it retailed for, but I'd probably give a rough estimate of about $99 Australian, I'd say. But on the front, we just have the branding, the seven inch resistive touchscreen that's on here. Flipping it around, we have power button. There's like these little holes in the casing, like it's meant to grip onto something. Probably an accessory that came with the package, but obviously I didn't get a package, so that's long gone. Nothing around that side. And that side, more little holes in the frame. Around this side, it's just a hole where a stylus would go, but there is actually a hole where a stylus is, if that makes sense. It doesn't make sense. And on this side, we have two screws, headphone jack, micro SD card, and a mini USB. And here is the actual stylus, which is just a little plasticky one, but we'll just use the Apple Pencil to navigate, I think. On the back we do have a microphone, reset button, illustrations for the ports and buttons, speaker, as well as the sticker on the back that says it's an acoustic TAMP 03510089987 made in China with a serial number just down there. But the entire thing's made of plastic, very, very cheap obviously, but we're interested to see for $1, can it do basic functions? Also, I have taken this apart. I know what the motherboard looks like, but I don't know the chips on the motherboard. I didn't really pay attention to them. This thing wasn't charging when I got it, so I've had to put another battery from a Welcome device into this and it all works. I'll show you the original battery that did come with it in the teardown. Let's power on the acoustic thing. Just give it time. There we go. Acoustic contains reader mobile technology from Adobe Reader Systems and that's about it. That's all I got to see. The screen is pretty scratched up, so I apologize if the display quality is not quite the best. And going for a closer look at the resolution of the screen, it's not the best but it's not the worst it'll do. The top reminds me of like first gen iPad sort of thing. We've got two little lights hovering over the features like music, video, photo, record, settings, explorer, ebook, my favorite in history all on little shelves and stuff like that. Also, it has a slide to unlock. There you go. So we can't do much in terms of the user interface. It is what it is. So I'll jump straight into settings first. Let's quickly go through settings. So we've got display setting, light time, probably needs to be 30 seconds, that'll do. Brightness, one, two, three, four, five. Five will do, that's bright enough. System setting, restorable. I guess we'll leave that. Key lock time, I've set it to 30 seconds. Calibration and invalid activation info. It's like it's iCloud or something. Doesn't it remind you of early iOS with this layout? I just, I don't know, maybe it's just me. System information, major version ID, 0.95.0. Local memory size, the eight gigabytes. I've got a two gig micro SD card in here and it contains Adobe Reader technology. It does open PDFs, I can say that. Languages, supports a whole bunch of different languages there. Auto shut time, no automatic shutdown. So we'll just leave that. Time, we can set the, oh God, it's 2122 accordingly. That's good. Yes, good. Calendar looks a little something like that. It's a Monday. I've selected the wrong date layout. That's okay. Why does it have a little earpiece at the top? I don't know, looking at that right there, it looks like iOS. Also, there appears to be no accelerometer in this. So it's kind of just stuck like this. You'd think with the branding there, you'd be using it like this most of the time, but to select stuff, you've got to go like this. Then when you go into stuff, you've got to go like this. Makes sense. The eyeball of music will open this up because we've got BFG division and you can favorite it if you want to. And you've got some settings down the bottom that just shows genre, artists and all that sort of stuff. Let's do the speaker test on this thing. Bump that all the way up. Thank <laughs> you. 
that doesn't sound too bad at all. That was like 103 we got to, even though, give or take, this isn't really accurate, but BFG Division actually sounded quite good on this. For a $1 tablet that beats majority of the Walkman devices that I usually look at on this channel. Let me try some earphones real quickly to see what it sounds like. That even fit? That doesn't sound too bad at all, even with these cheap ear phones that I just broke. That happened? <laughs> that happened? I require this back, thank you. Oh shit. There we go. Oh, well, they broke. They sounded okay, but now they're broken. Sad. Rest in peace, knockoff beats here, phones. Rest in peace. It's alright, I'll have to get some new ones then. Okay, so yeah, if you found this at your local flea market and you wanted to put it on volume 32, which is the maximum, not too bad. Even though it's a single speaker, it's fine. Video. I had troubles putting video on this, but I managed to, <laughs> out of my entire list there, I managed to get Costa Rica working. I know it definitely works in 480p 30fps in AVI format, but I'm going to try it in 720p 60fps first just to see if it works. And I think it will. Oh my god, there it is. So this is 60 FPS Costa Rica. Okay, it's not going so well. We should have seen something. There's a snake. At least it can open 60 FPS files. Unlike the X12 Plus thing that I recently looked at, that couldn't open anything that was 60 FPS because the system on chip actually didn't support it. So then if I try 480p 30 FPS on Avi, does this look any better? That's smooth enough. Well, it's not the clearest, that's for sure. At least it plays 480p video at a reasonable quality? That's a little bit choppy here and there, but for one dollar, the fact that it plays video at all is just amazing in itself. Well done, cheap media player. You're doing pretty well so far. Also, there was no preloaded stuff on the internal storage of this thing. I already checked. Considering it was sold at Target, I have a feeling they wouldn't have done that because they have slightly better quality control than like generic tablets sold on AliExpress and stuff. In photos, I put a few images on here. I did try some 48 megapixel shots that I took with the phone. However, they don't open. Then I tried a 16 megapixel shot and that doesn't open. It just does a little something like... Never mind, it opens now. That's a 16 megapixel shot of the lemons. And if I go for a bit of a zoom in, just, just wait, just wait. Look, 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 we're getting there, we're getting there. Oh, is that as far as I can go? Well, um, there you go, there's the lemons there. I think this was taken with the OnePlus 9 Pro, I think. You can also rotate it around, have fun with that. Oh God, that's a bit slow. There's a Doom Eternal image there, just for sort of color and all that sort of stuff. Just go for a bit of a zoom in. And you can see that the quality does get a little bit lost once you zoom in, but hey, it's still not too bad at all. See, it's this format error if I try and open something that's not supported and it just has this window there. I have a feeling the window was supposed to be there, but they kind of didn't really sort of work that out and that's fine, it's okay. Once again, at least it opens pictures. If you wanted to use this as a cheapo digital photo frame, stick it on the wall, put a mini USB cable in it and keep it continuously charged and show a whole bunch of photos with the slideshow on, feel free. Also, I love how flash memory actually shows the Adobe Flash logo for flash memory, but that's not how that works, but that's all right. The recording function looks a little something like this, and I already have done a recording test with this, and you can actually change the bitrate to high rate and low rate. But the problem is I can't actually transfer this to my computer because if I plug it into a computer, it doesn't recognize, and I can't actually go into the file explorer and change the settings around, it just doesn't work. So I'll go into explorer, then go into flash memory, then go into record, then go to this. And this is the microphone quality of the $1 tablet, the iCoustic thing. Uh, this is what it sounds like. Hopefully it doesn't sound too bad. I've also selected high rate, which means that it should be in some sort of higher quality than usual. Anyways, uh, the screen's turned off, so I'll just leave it here. Doesn't sound too bad. Definitely not the best, and it does have a lot of noise in it as well, but I literally cannot complain. The fact that the thing powers on after I've stuffed around with it is a feat in itself. So obviously Explorer is just the file explorer, and as I said, there's nothing on the internal storage that was preloaded. Ebook, I've got a text file and a PDF file. I've put the Doom Bible on. I need to show that on more phones, actually. I wrote this up. Uh, if you want to pause and read that, feel free. You can read ebooks on this thing if you want to, and I can actually draw on it. Wait, what? I can draw on it. I don't know what I was drawing, but uh, okay. 
Okay, that was terrible. The touch screen's not really that accurate, and if I sort of poke on the screen, it just sort of taps. But you know what? That's interesting that you can do that. You can have bookmarks as well, and the brightness. You can have the brightness at certain levels. You can have recordings going on in the background while you read an ebook. It's got some features. PDFs open. So we can read the Doom Bible by Tom Hall that was written up in 1992. And what do you know? It works. Although it's a little slow, yes, it works. <laughs> I'm not seeing too many pictures, but I haven't went through the Doom Bible in so long. But uh, you can chuck PDFs on here and open them up to your heart's content and favorite them if you want. History just shows what you've opened previously. So you can go back to that and use that. And then my favorites is just whatever you favorited that says no file. That's it for this thing. It's very basic, but it functions perfectly fine as a cheap media player. And it's performed better than I actually thought, to be fairly honest. So I will give the IQ stick, whatever the hell it was called, a decent rating. It's just got the limited functionality that is all you need for a tablet like this. Even for 10 bucks, this thing would be usable if it worked when you bought it. If you had to do what I did, then that's debatable. Resistive touchscreen, plays music, plays videos, shows photos. Not much really else I could say about this. Let's tear it down and get to show you the actual guts then. And if I hold the power button, it says goodbye. That looks like Google. And it's off. Also, I've got to give a massive shout out to Troy Van here. He sent me a package of different colored picks to open stuff, and I tested one earlier. Worked beautiful. So instead of trying to use my metal tool and my little plastic cardstock that I have, I can just grab one of these out in any color that I choose, which for the most part will be red, and I can go ahead and just disassemble things using these if I want. Thank you, Troy. I appreciate that, man. That'll definitely go to good use. Inside of this tablet, <laughs> we have the guts. So there's the display with the touch on there like so and a little sticker there that says nothing that I would recognize, but it's made in China though. Oh, the stylus is still stuck in there. That's okay. Completely forgot about that. And then inside of it, there's the battery that I uh, borrowed off the Yumi phone device that I looked at a while ago. And the actual battery that was in this is this one right here. And this actually still works. It just refused to charge in this. And that's a 2,500 milliamp hour battery they had stuck in this. So that's quite reasonable for what it is, to be honest. But yeah, for some reason it just wouldn't charge in this. So I just kind of soldered that one in there and soldered this one. It all works, it's fine, don't worry about it. We have bits of foam just for the screen. The microphone is just sort of hot glued into place there so it doesn't come out. The speaker on this is 30 millimeter driver that they've put into this. Not too bad. It's an eight ohm, one watt speaker, but it didn't sound too bad. All right, I'll just lift everything out. The processor in this is a rock chip RK2738, which I don't think I've looked at a rock chip on this channel before. Also, there's a place for a secondary, I would say probably TV out. I was gonna say headphone jack, but most likely TV AV out, which is quite interesting to see, although it's not implemented. I wonder if you actually soldered one on there, if it would actually work or not. A question I'll never get to answer. We've got this King Pod module there with an eight gig sticker on it, but we have them on the other side. I'll Google that and make sure that corresponds with four gig and four gig, it should do. And the RAM in this should be under this, and it is, I think a Micron module. I'll Google that and see what that corresponds with. And also it says 2011 on there. So there you go, 2011, this was manufactured. So probably sold in 2012, most likely. Another spot for a module just there that's been unused. That's what makes up the guts for this thing. And I don't know what other systems the Rockchip RK2738 has been used in, but it possibly could have been integrated into some cheapo game consoles. It might be a capable chip. I'm not sure, I'd have to look it up. That's it, no nonsense stuff going on within this. Okay, let's see if it still works. Still works. That's good. I still don't know the specs of the screen, but I'll just display a rough sheet of what the specs are inside of this thing so you can get an idea of what $1 got me. A completely functional tablet that, yeah, it's basic, but it does the job. Seriously, you could just use this as a dedicated music player. Just have it to the side, have it playing music 24 seven if you wanted to, or a digital photo frame, or have it in your business displaying a demo video or something like that. You could use it for a couple of things. It's not altogether completely useless. Apart from it eating my headphones, that's probably one thing I'm gonna criticize this for. It ate my headphones, and now I'll have to find some replacement ones, and I've got plenty in the garage. But hey, I wasn't expecting much for a dollar, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised 
surprised at what this thing offers. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed looking at this thing with me. The acoustic 7-inch media tablet player thing. Let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. I don't think it's too bad at all, to be fairly honest. I mean, go onto AliExpress and try and find the cheapest media player, a 7-inch one, that you can. And let me know what the price of that would be. But for $1, you can stay in my collection as a thing that I'll probably never use again. But hey, it was cool looking at it. All right, everyone. That's going to do it for another episode of Tacky Tablets. That didn't go for very long at all. So if you made it to the end of this video, that means it probably didn't go for too long. Or you just stuck around to watch it till the end anyways. Regardless, thank you very much for sticking around and watching it. I really do appreciate it. But if you had to use timestamps in the description as well as a pinned comment to skip along past this, that's completely fine. That's why they are there. As always, please take care, stay safe, and be good people. And I'll see you all in the next video, which will be looking at a phone of some sorts. I know I said I was going back to phones, but this sort of popped up and I wanted to have a look at it. And here we are. I'll definitely keep my eye out at the flea market for more interesting things like this. I'll try and see if I can get something for 50 cents next time. But anyways, until then, folks, please take care and I'll see you next time. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.